Hey there, and welcome back to the Charger Bulletin News. We have lots in store for you today, including an on-set interview with Scope VP of Finance regarding this weekend's homecoming festivities. As well as insight into the Latin American Student Association and Caribbean Student Association's events this past week. And don't forget about our weekly Charger Sports Update. All of this coming up on the Charger Bulletin News. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Charger Bulletin News. Happy October and midterm season. I'm Nick. And I'm Julianne. That's right, we have a good show for you today, so let's get started. On Tuesday, October 1st, the Latin American Student Association held their Taste of America event in the Molten Lounge. Students from all over campus were welcome to join and learn more about the Latin American culture, foods, and traditions here in the United States. Students from all cultural backgrounds attended and got the chance to taste different foods and ingredients from all around Latin America. LASA will be tabling in Bartels next week for their Not My Stereotype event. Feel free to stop by their tables and explain why you are not your own stereotype. On October 2nd, the Caribbean Student Association held their colorism event where attendees were lectured about the colorism stigma between different islands and the racial tensions that it can bring. Students learned how to end this stigma and what they can do on our campus to create an inclusive community. For more information about upcoming Caribbean Student Association events, email csa at newhaven.edu. This weekend is the university's annual homecoming celebration. Although every year students expect a homecoming concert to be planned, this year is a little bit different. The Student Committee of Programming Events, also known as SCOPE, has a new idea in store for the University of New Haven. This Friday, SCOPE will be hosting the first ever homecoming pre-game rally. With me now is Emily Krupe, Vice President of Finance for SCOPE. Thank you for joining us, Emily. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about the events that are uh, going to happen for this year's homecoming? So basically the idea of this homecoming pregame rally is to celebrate homecoming. We are celebrating the football team, we are celebrating Charger Pride, so we decided to go with a DJ show. It's going to be a night of dancing and fun and a bunch of giveaways and it's just a really good time to celebrate with your friends and have a lot of pride for our school. That's awesome. And for people like myself who have never been to a homecoming, what can we expect you know, from a, going to a first time event like homecoming. So you can expect a lot of pride and celebration and excitement. This is gonna be something that people have never experienced before at this school. The company that we have providing this event, the production company Grove Boston, they're known for putting on iconic DJ shows. So this experience is gonna be exactly what I just called it, an experience. It's not going to be your average concert. It's just going to be something that we can all look back on and be like, wow, that was a great way to kick off homecoming weekend. And uh, what events or entertainment do we have planned for the pregame rally? So Group Boston is providing two house DJs. Um, one is going to be an opener and then there's going to be like a headlining set. So it's basically just going to be like uh, dance for a little bit to your favorite songs. And then that headlining set is going to be when it's like really time to celebrate and like go crazy. That's amazing. And how can students gain entry into the rally? So it's first come first serve this year. We decided no tickets because we thought that would be such a hassle. It's really supposed to be an event that you can let be like, yeah, I just want to go and it's I'm going to show up, you can bring a guest, everything's on a first come first serve basis, no hassle. And what do you like most about hom homecoming? I really like the idea of everyone coming together and celebrating our school. I mean, yes, the football game is such a big deal, but at the same time, we're all a family, we're all chargers, and that is what's most important about homecoming. That is very well said. Well, Emily, thank you so much for joining us today. I am quite excited for this pregame rally this weekend, and I'm sure we will see you all there. Well, it was yet another busy week for our Charger sports. Joe, how did the Chargers do this week? Thanks, Nick and Julianne. Football traveled to Bentley University on Friday night for a primetime Northeast 10 matchup. On the opening drive for New Haven, Bentley intercepted the pass from junior quarterback Nick Robbins and returned it for a touchdown to give the Falcons an early 7-0 lead. Chargers responded quickly on their next drive 
when senior Chris Liggio punched in a 67-yard drive for New Haven even the score. Robbins called his own number just a drive later for a one-yard rushing touchdown to pull ahead 14-7. However, the rest of the game was dominated by Bentley as they scored 24 unanswered points to get a 31-14 win. Robbins led the offense with 140 passing yards, a rushing touchdown, but sadly two interceptions. Liggio led the run game with 76 yards and a touchdown. The defense was led by graduate student Zach Confrancesco, who finished with six tackles. New Haven moves to 2-2 two two overall and 2-1 and in the conference after the loss. Now, Saturday, homecoming weekend, the Chargers will play against Pace University at 1 p.m. So go out before the game, tailgate, and then go out and support the boys in their game. On Saturday, Chargers volleyball headed to the College of St. Rose to take on the Golden Knights. The Chargers came out firing, winning the first set 25 to 18. Chargers kept the momentum as they went on to win the match three sets to one. New Haven was led by senior Mallory Nowicki with 12 kills and a block. Excellent serving again by the Chargers helped them secure this win. Sophomore Ruby Farah had four aces with, ju with junior Callie Greathead adding another. The Chargers will come home tonight for a 7 p.m. matchup against Caldwell University at Charger Gymnasium, so go out and support them tonight. Men's soccer took on St. Rose Tuesday, looking to get their first conference win. St. Rose struck first, scoring two goals in the first half and holding the Chargers scoreless going into the half. Chargers shut out St. Rose in the second half and scored their, first, their own goal in the 85th minute. A goal from graduate student Clytus Capillary closed the gap, making it 2-1. However, that was too little too late as New Haven wasn't able to score and tie the game up. With the loss, they fall to 2-5 on the year and 0-4 in the conference. Men's soccer will play again on Saturday at 11 a.m. at Stonehill College, looking to turn things around. Women's soccer faced off against 17th ranked Pace on Wednesday afternoon. Chargers struggled to get anything going offensively as they only took four shots on the day and only two of them were on goal. Junior goalkeeper for the Chargers, Paige Davis, recorded five saves on the day. Women's soccer will travel to Adelphi University on Saturday with the game starting at 5 p.m. For tennis, they traveled on Sunday to Malloy where they swept the day, winning the match 7-0. The Chargers were led by sophomore Nicole Mika and freshman Catherine McPhail, who each swept their singles matches on the day. Mika and junior Lilia Rodriguez won their, the first doubles match, which helped their fellow Chargers to the win. Tennis moves to 5-3 on the season and 4-3 and in the conference. The Chargers will next play on Saturday at 11 a.m. at LeMoyne University in another Northeast 10 matchup. Field hockey traveled to Southern Connecticut State. A scoreless game through the first three quarters was finally broken when freshman Anna Racine scored her first career, career goal for the Chargers. That was enough for New Haven to hold on for a 1-0 win. The shutout is the first win in program history for the Chargers, so they're doing great things and more things to come. With the win, New Haven moves to 4-3 in the conference. Field hockey will play next on Sunday at Westchester University, who is number two in the country. Game time is 3 p.m. That's all we have for Charger Sports this week. Back to you, Nick and Julianne. On September 26th, Charger Bulletin writer Hannah Providence published an article regarding the vaping issue in the United States and the stigma behind it. Today we have Hannah here to join us to discuss her research and findings on vaping and e-cigarette users. Hannah, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So where did the idea of writing an article on vaping stem from? Um, that's pretty simple. Um, the advisor of the Charger Bulletin, Susan Campbell, she actually brought up the topic for me to write. Um, and at the time, there was about eight deaths um, that were vaping related, and we knew that this was a really pressing issue and that we had to get on it. Okay. What are some of your biggest findings regarding e-cigarettes, jewels, and, vape and vapes as you research this article? As I researched the article, I noticed that um, vaping wasn't a, like a pastime for a lot of people. It was really a habit. Um, jewel users, regular users, spend about $180 a month really? on Juul products themselves. Um, and also a lot of the e-cigarettes and e-liquids um, contain THC, which is an ingredient in marijuana. Mm -hmm. And so although there are a lot of nicotine-based e-liquids, there's also a lot of THC-based as well. Okay. What um, surprised you the most from these findings? Um, the most surprising thing definitely was the amount of young people who were using vaping. People who have never been exposed to smoking cigarettes before, which was mainly what e-cigarettes was created for as an alternative to cigarettes. 
Um, but now there's about like 17% of high school students, really? high school students who are using vaping products. That's early. Yeah, it really is. So how do you think e-cigarettes affect college students, and especially on our campus? College students is a really important demographic. Um, the majority population of college students are legal, are of the legal age to actually purchase vaping products. So they're the ones that we're really paying attention to, mm -hmm. um, especially because it, right now the trend looks like it's gonna be a repeat of the cigarette era in yeah. which a lot of the young folks at that time were smoking cigarettes and now we see what that's doing to their bodies and how they're being affected by it. And um, the college population, it's starting so young and they're already getting addicted to these products and we're worried to see what's gonna happen in the future with them. Mm -hmm. um, what precautions is the university taking to move forward with these issues? University of New Haven is a smoke-free campus, which is really great. That includes vaping products. You really are not allowed to smoke um, or vape on the campus. And um, right now the health, health services is really focusing on spreading awareness about the deaths that are happening with vaping. Right now there's, um, I think, 17 deaths and counting of vaping-related illnesses, and there's about 800 hospitalizations um, in the U.S. related to vaping. And so they're really focused on spreading that awareness and making sure that people are doing their best to stop. What should students expect in the near future regarding these devices? Definitely expect a lot of regulation happening. Right now, they don't know what is really causing the vaping illnesses. And so um, a lot of states are taking action to just reduce the amount of people who are purchasing vape products altogether. And so expect um, temporary bans, which a lot of states are putting in action right now. Mm -hmm. Expect to just have limited ways of purchasing the vaping products as they're investigating. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Hannah, for joining us today. For more information on this story, you can check out Hannah's full article on chargerbulletin.com. Well, that's all we have for you this week on the Charger Bulletin News. To stay up to date with on-campus news, visit thechargerbulletin.com and follow us on social media at Charger Bulletin. Catch our next episode of The Charge Up on our Facebook page and YouTube next Tuesday. That's all we have for you this week. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Julianne. And I'm Nick. We'll see you next week on the Charger Bulletin News. Thank you.